Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this morning. I trust and hope that you guys are doing really fantastic. And so we're going to be taking a look at our systems out there. We've got Hurricanes Lee and Margo to talk about, as well as Invest 98L, which is going to be merged with another low pressure area. And then eventually we will have a new storm developing potentially by the end of this week. And before I go into details, Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. Okay, then so uh, let's zoom into the Caribbean for a moment here. So we can see that there isn't much happening across most islands. Uh, most of that activity is seen over in parts of Central America, but there is some thunderstorm activity offshore of some spots in the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, even near the Cayman Islands as well. But for most areas, nothing much is going on. It has been rather hot and dry for many islands. And unfortunately today, a whole lot of rainfall is not expected. So maybe be some passing showers across parts of the northern islands but it is really over in central and in, uh, parts of northern south america that will experience the substantial rainfall activity through today so uh, going from mexico all the way to panama and uh, parts of colombia venezuela and guyana there could be some substantial rainfall activity across some areas but again things get pretty dry in southeastern islands but windward islands including trinidad tobago the abc islands and Barbados and so now let's go ahead and talk about our systems so first things first we're going to be looking at hurricane Lee so here we've got the latest cone forecast for the cyclone and we can see here that it is sustaining uh, cat 3 intensity winds of 115 miles per hour and it is moving to the west northwest at 7 miles per hour so it's making that turn and it is not moving much however as we head to the latter part of this week it should gradually accelerate up to the north northeast or up to the north a bit faster well much faster than it is moving right now but it could be very close to bermuda and uh watches could be required later today so going on to the key messages for the second point there we can see there is an increase in risk of strong winds rainfall and high surf impacts to bermuda later this week and tropical storm watches could uh, could be required for the island later today so if you're in bermuda you want to ensure that you are staying up to date with what is going on with the system and then of course in the long term it could potentially become a problem for parts of a parts of atlantic canada and the northeastern u.s as well especially the state of maine and then uh, the system is currently generating those dangerous, uh, that dangerous surf. So that is what the first pointer talks about. Dangerous surf and life-threatening rip currents will affect portions of the Northern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Bahamas, Bermuda, and most of the U.S. East Coast through much of the week. So as it relates to marine activities, there is that hazard because of the rough seas that Lee is generating. So please expect exercise caution in that regard but the good news is that lee will be weakening potentially a post-tropical cyclone at this time of impact so as we go back to the cone here there we can see that uh white shading with that s so that is indicating post-tropical cyclone so uh, it is going to be weakening over the course of the next several days now we're heading on to margo as i said it recently became a hurricane yesterday and it is sustaining winds of 85 miles per hour and we'll up to the north at 13 miles per hour so it's not going to be a brother for anyone and uh it could peak at a cat too so we'll see what happens with it over the course of the next several days and now we're moving on to invest 98 l here so we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this disturbance we can see that it is given a high 70 percent chance of development through the next seven days and imminent formation is not likely so we've got that x that is marked to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands and uh, we're gonna have the system making its way up to the west and then uh, the west northwest and is likely to miss the Caribbean here so if this shaded area was say a little bit more south then there would be a better potential of it actually uh, nearing the Caribbean but here we're seeing that it is seemingly shifting a bit more to the north compared to previous updates for example this was last evening so we can see that it was a bit further south but it is likely that the system is going to be remaining
Caribbean offshore of the Caribbean, but we still want to watch it to see what happens eventually over the course of the next coming days. But there's a pretty decent chance of this just being a fish storm, not bringing any impacts to anyone. And as we take a look at the area on satellite imagery, there are two low pressure areas here. So one is with previously known uh, Invest 97L, which is now off the map. Why? Because it is going to be merging with uh, now 98L. So there's going to be one combined system, which is 98L, and we will see some development of it as we head into the latter part of this week. Conditions ahead are expected to be conducive. Uh, those very warm waters, lots of moisture, wind shear not being too impactful, so we should see something develop as we progress to the end of the week. And then as it relates to conditions, let's actually go ahead and take a look at this map here. So here we've got the sea surface temperature anomaly map. Those areas in those warmer colors, those shades of oranges, reds indicate above average temperatures and our blue areas indicate below average temperatures. Now all of that uh, that we're seeing offshore of the U.S. right there, that is likely upwelled waters from previous cyclones such as Franklin. So Franklin was sitting around and what happens is that it's just taking in all that heat and energy uh, in that general area and then eventually cooler water further beneath the surface comes up to replace that taken warm water. So we find that the temperature there is uh, cooler than what it should be. So overall temperatures are supportive of us actually seeing development of the system out there, but that isn't the only factor. As we look at the dry air map, we're seeing that there isn't a whole lot of dry air out ahead of the system. Of course, there is some here and there, but there isn't a huge plume that's going to be inhibiting development of 98 L and uh, as it relates to what the ensemble tracks from both GFS and Euro have to show, let's go ahead and take a look at them. And we're starting out with Euro. So this is as we head out to Monday of next week, the 18th of the month. And here we can see that they are expecting that the system will be remaining offshore of anywhere as it develops. So it will be taking on that northwestward track eventually. And as you go on to the GFS ensemble members around the same time, Monday the 18th, there we can see some uh, some of these members want to take the system a bit closer to the Caribbean but the bulk of them keep it offshore which seems like a very likely outcome. So uh, it's likely that we will have development as I said and the next name to be used for the season is Nigel. So we, we should have Nigel potentially by this weekend or early next week um, but of course we have to continue watching it as it develops and see what happens and of course I'm here to keep you guys posted on all that is happening with the tropics and so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update and I trust and hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions as per usual please do leave them in the comments I will respond to you once I get the chance to do so and as always remember to be otherwise.